Although again, doing another yard tour. Made a list this time, so hopefully I don't miss anything. So, up here on the side of the yard, these are mostly decorative, but there are some uses for them. So here we have some um, Rudbeckia, gold sturm. So it can be used a lot like echinacea. There we have a gopher hole. And we have a bunch of echinaceas over here. Same thing, can be used medicinally. Then we have some crocosmias, I think that's how it's said. Just decorative. And then some crossoregal hostas. So hostas can be eaten. Mostly in the early spring, when they're first coming up. They're used for things like stir fries and things like that. So over here, I have some sweet woodruff. It's a really nice smelling herb. I like it mostly because whenever I walk by here, I get a little whiff of it. Tegan likes it because she likes to roll around in it. <laughs> um, and then inside of that patch, we have some other plants. So back here, this is giant Solomon seal, which a lot like the hostas can be used as an early spring vegetable when it first comes up. And I also have some pawpaws in here. This is one I just planted this spring. It's pretty short still, but it's grown quite a bit this spring. So this is a... Uh, what's the variety on this one? This is Pennsylvania Golden. Uh, so it's supposed to tea. <laughs> Sorry, Tegan's friend just showed up. saying we have a Pennsylvania Golden Pawpaw, which is this newest one. And it's supposed to be one of the best for short season areas like we have. So I've got that one planted. In the back there's NC1. And then this one here is KSU Atwood. So they were planted last year or the year before, I can't remember exactly. Um, they're doing pretty well, so they're underneath the shade of a giant elm tree. So, it's been protecting them for the first couple of years. Then in the back, way back there, that's actually a young American hazelnut that's been there, well, I say young. I planted it five years ago. And it hasn't really grown at all. I don't think it likes having this much shade. But it's survived so far, so we'll see. Um, in front of that here we have some red currants. You can see they're just about ripe. I'm probably going to pick most of them uh, today. Next to them, have some Josta berries. So they're a lot larger berries than red currants. But I have mixed feelings about them. Um, I got quite a few last year, picked them and made some jam and it has a very uh, different flavor. <laughs> like when cooking them for the jam, they it smelled like green beans, and a little bit of that taste remained afterwards. And I'm not sure if I just picked them a little early or what happened. So we'll see. Um, they're not really close to ripe yet. So they'll get almost pure black by the time they're ripe. For right now, they're just kind of a purplish, light purple. Uh, in front of those, 
I have some red vein sorrel, which doesn't like the heat at all, but it keeps surviving, so that's cool. And get some little seedlings, which I don't mind at all. Uh, I have quite a few weeds. I've been really busy with work for the last few months, and so I haven't had as much time to work in the yard as I would have liked. But that's okay. Things are going up. Things are growing and surviving at least. Uh, behind here we have some columbine, a few different kinds. Uh, columbine is generally considered poisonous, so don't eat it. But it's pretty and you can actually get a little bit of nectar from the flowers. You just take the, pick the flowers and you snip off the very ends of the backs of the flowers and squeeze and you can get a little drop of nectar. We used to do that all the time as kids. It's a lot of fun. And then here, we have some seedlings that I planted last year. So these are pistachios. There's one there and one over there. They're fairly short still. I've grown maybe four or five inches this year. Uh, but they survived the winter just fine. These are some seedlings from uh, Utah State University, which is farther north and higher elevation than me. So I have, I believe they'll do all right here. But it's probably going to be 10 years at least before they fruit. And then we have some rhubarb. Gotta have rhubarb. And then these are honey berries. So the short one here is Polar Jewel, and the taller one is Borealis. I've had trouble getting fruit from them. I'm not sure if it's because they're in kind of a shaded location or I'm just not very good at finding the fruit. I always get some berries, but it seems like they disappear before they're really ripe. So it might just be birds, I don't know. And over here we have some hostas, so, well, underneath a giant bleeding heart that is spreading like mad, and I don't really mind that it is, is a summon substance hosta. And over here we have Blue Angel and Jurassic Park. So those are the big kind of centerpiece ones. Tegan. I have a bunch of other little ones kind of in the area too, but I don't really keep track of all of their names. And over here, we'll go on to the next area. So this is mostly herbs. Um, so the first one here is lemon thyme. It's just starting to bloom. And this has been kind of an interesting experience for me because it survives the winter technically, but just barely. So like, here's one of the ones I planted last year and it's alive, but not doing super well. But I don't know, we'll see. I really like it, so I planted some more. Hopefully they'll start doing a little bit better over the winter as they get a little older. Um, got some more rhubarb. Then we have purple sage, which is pretty much impossible to kill, thankfully. And then behind that we have some garden sage. So the garden sage was much larger, but I had trouble with some uh, voles in this part of the yard and they just destroyed everything. They were eating all the bark off of the herbs during the winter and a lot of them struggled to survive that. Thankfully the sage is pretty tough so it's coming back nicely but it was pretty frustrating. Uh, and here we have oh kind of in the back too got some chives. So they're done flowering. They've kind of died back a little bit and then they'll come back again strong in about a month or so. And in front of that, with all these purple flowers and all the bees, 
is catmint. So this is a great plant for attracting pollinators. It looks great pretty much all year round. And it's just super easy to take care of. It can be used in teas and things like that. So behind that over here we have French tarragon. It's a classic of French cuisine, I believe. It has a pretty strong licorice smell. Uh, here we have some mother of thyme, which did really well this last winter. It's been spreading really well, which is good. And then over here, kind of behind the tarragon, we have some rosemary. So this is the ARP variety. It's made for, well, it's one of the hardier varieties. And then behind that, got lavender, which is just starting to bloom. So this is uh, the variety Grosso. Uh, it's a more compact variety. And it's supposed to be one of the most fragrant as well. So, kind of back here we have a bunch of daylilies. So this is one of the edible varieties. I believe this is actually the species. Um, and it's doing pretty well. It's a little bit yellow, but it doesn't seem to be hurting it really. Flowers, I ate, I ate flower earlier this year and it was pretty good, so. And we have some bee balm here. So it won't start blooming for well, maybe another month still. And some salad burnet in the back there. It's pretty much done blooming. Uh, it tastes kind of like cucumbers used in salads, hence the name. And over here we have some hot and spicy oregano, which is just starting to bloom. So it's probably not very good to pick anymore but the blooms are pretty and the bees love them so I let them go to flower every year and I do want it to spread a little bit too which it's been doing so it's another benefit and here we have Hall's hardy almond so three of these trees they bloom like mad in the spring and are gorgeous for tea Tegan Come here. Tegan's over there investigating the gopher hole. But she's in my neighbor's yard, so can't have that. Yeah, so Hall's Hardy Almond. You can see some of the almonds developing. So you can actually eat uh, green almonds. So the unripe almond fruit. And it's fairly common in some countries. It tastes like a sour green bean. So here we have some winter savory. This is a really great herb. It can be used in pretty much anything. Uh, it's a favorite for me for pizzas, actually. Uh, and then next to that, we have an unfortunate misstep for the year. So this is, or was, uh, Tasmanian Mountain Pepper and I really think it needs to go in a spot that gets a little more water than this right here. This is one of the driest areas in my yard and I think it was a little bit of a mistake to plant it here. I'm gonna try again um, so we'll see. Then here we have uh, sold to me is nutmeg thyme. It really doesn't have a very strong scent, which I was kind of disappointed about, but it does have kind of a mild sweet scent. Uh, this is black currant, which again is not particularly loving this dry area here. I'm going to add another sprinkler, I think, to try and help them out, especially since I'm going to be planting another pawpaw in this general area. 
And uh, so here we have some Egyptian walking onions. So you can see the little bulblets on top of the stalks here. They get these instead of flowers. And then they bend down and kind of plant their babies. So that's why they are called walking onions, because they kind of walk through the garden. And I have a couple more pawpaws over here. So inside of this, all this lemon balm, right there, there's a little papa seedling. So it's not a named variety. And then this one here, this is my largest papa. I actually got one ripe fruit off of this last year. This is sunflower. Let me see if I had any fruit survive our weird wind, weird weather this spring. Uh, not seeing any. I know it did have some that were pollinated, but we have been having some pretty strange weather and I think that kind of encouraged the tree to drop them, but that's okay. Here we have a clustered bellflower. I think this is Genty Blue. It's one of the smaller varieties. And the flowers are edible. This is Chicago Hardy Fig. So it mine dies back pretty much to the ground every year. And then it'll grow to five to six feet by the end of the year. So I leave the old dead branches until the new ones are about this tall and then I'll cut them back. That's mostly so I don't step on them by accident. Uh, there is some parsley mixed in here. I kind of regret planting parsley. It spreads like crazy by seed. Uh, so I've actually been trying to get rid of it. Speaking of spreading like crazy by seed, here's some whorehound, which I've heard has the same tendency. Um, We'll see if that stays or not. This is used in old candies and medicines. Uh, I don't like the candy, some people do. I think they're a little crazy. And here we have some uh, Greek oregano going to flower. And we have, let's see, here we have some true hyssop that's just starting to flower. Next to that we have some anise hyssop, which is probably still a month away from flowering. And then we have over here sunset hyssop, which is just getting ready to flower right now. Won't focus on that single stalk, I think, but it has a really feathery kind of leaf. So the anise hyssop and sunset hyssop have a very licorice-like smell. The um, true hyssop doesn't. It has a very different kind of smell. All three are used in teas and cooking. Um, <laughs> this is kind of a fun volunteer that I have. I planted it once a while ago, but it keeps coming back and I don't mind. So this is chocolate flower. Um, so it's a daisy relative, and the flowers really do smell like chocolate. A well, disadvantage to it is that they flower um, at night, in early morning, and they close during the day. So just keep that in mind if you want them. Here we have some lovage, which is pretty much done blooming, getting ready to go to seed now. So this is a very tall herb. So it is probably six feet tall right now. I'm gonna cut down the flower spikes here momentarily if I can find the time. Uh, but the leaves look a lot like celery and they taste a lot like celery, except really strong. So you don't have to use very much. Um, we also have some garlic, well, a lot of garlic chives. This is another one that reseeds very easily. And it'll have big white flower heads in 
about a month as well. So let's move on to the next area. So this is mostly fruits. So a lot of berries and things like that. So this is my strawberry patch here. And in spite of me not taking very good care of it, I was picking some days three or four pounds a day. So that was pretty exciting this year. Um, also have some dwarf raspberries. So these are the strawberry shortcake. And they have not been very productive typically, but there are a lot of raspberries on them right now, especially for their size, and they are just starting to ripen. Uh, there's some more daylilies. Uh, there's more rhubarb. This is Victoria here. This bunch probably needs to be split up. Uh, so I'll probably look at doing that this fall. And in the back here, this is some Viking Aronia, or chokeberry. So I just planted them last year, didn't really get any fruit, so we'll see. I've heard they make decent preserves, so we'll give that a go. And these little trees here, these are Cornelian cherries. This is Pioneer has red fruit and you can actually see some of the fruit here so it won't ripen for a while still but this will be the first year I'll get any fruit and this is yellow which also has some fruit on it kind of hidden in the leaves And then we have some chocolate mint here, which is just getting ready to bloom. And next to that, behind all these weeds, we have some golden or clove currants. So these things are stupid productive. Like so productive that the branches end up laying on the ground. You can probably see on this one. And they, are kind of interesting because they will start ripening now. As you can see, there's a couple blackberries in there and there are some that are still really green. So they tend to ripen over a really long period of time. So this tree here, this is an Angelo Rosso Azarole. It gets these kind of red new leaves. And let me see if I can find some fruit, if any made it. I've been having some trouble with um, iron deficiency in this part of the yard. And so I've been working on correcting it, but it's made it tough for some of these trees. Doesn't look like it has any fruit on it right now. And this guy here is Chinese Ha. It's a red sun variety. Again, new red leaves and it does have a few little fruits on it they're kind of apple like and this tree is a crab apple and you can see it was struggling or iron a little earlier in the year, but I think I've corrected it for this guy. Because the new leaves look really good. You can see a few of the little crab apples here. So I got one crab apple off of this tree last year, and it was really tasty. It wasn't bitter or sour really. It's just very flavorful and sweet. I'm excited about getting more of those. They're supposed to be some of the best spiced crab apples. Uh, this is an apple rose. Lots of big rose hips. So it is actually covered in aphids this spring, but the ladybugs came and eventually took care of it and it's recovering nicely. I'm getting some new growth. These mushrooms popped up overnight. 
No idea what they are. Probably not good to eat, but kind of fun. Um, so some of these more noticeable bushes here. These are bush cherries. So the one with all the red cherries on it right now is Juliet. And I've actually been having a lot of problems with this tree or bush. Uh, it's sending up root runners all over the place. It's falling over and I don't know if I just planted it in a bad spot or if that's typical for the variety. I don't know, but it's been kind of a pain. Uh, the one next to it is Romeo, which still has a little bit before it's close to ripe even. And I got some ripe cherries off of this one last year and they were quite good. But it's a little bit hard to tell when they're actually ripe. So, for example, these cherries on Juliet, you might think they're ripe, but they're not. They're still at least a week away. So they're pretty tart right now. Uh, over here, we have sea kale. So this is a perennial kale. It's hard to like zone five, which is crazy. Not a huge fan of the sun, but it does pretty well considering. Um, so I've had that for three years now and it keeps coming back bigger and better. I actually saved some seeds from it last year too and they were pretty easy to start. So I think I'm going to start a bunch more this next year and expand my patch. Uh, also have some persimmons here. So this one is the persimmon that's doing the best for me. So this is Jiro. So this is a non-astringent persimmon. And as you can see, it has quite a few fruits on it. And I didn't get any fruit last year because we had a really late freeze in the spring and a really early freeze in the fall and they weren't quite ripe yet but I did the year before that I did get some fruit so here's hoping uh, this is a new addition this year it's a new little persimmon this is Nikita's gift so it's an American Asian persimmon cross it's supposed to be very hardy I bought that to replace this guy. It's one of my um, sad losses for the year. So this was a Hachia persimmon. And I think it didn't really like that uh, early hard frost we got last year. But whatever the rootstock is, it survived. So I have emailed the company I got this from, One Green World figure out what they use for rootstock and if it's something interesting I'll keep it if not I'll pull it out I actually also lost one of my um, one of my mulberries so this is mulberry varieties Girardi or Giraldi I'm not really sure I've seen it both ways online and it has been producing really well for the past couple of weeks and it still has probably two more weeks before it's done but its neighbor didn't make it through the winter and it broke right at the graft and so I'm not sure if it's because I left the branches too long and we had a lot of wind or if it's because of all the frosts I'm not 100% sure what killed it but it's probably weather related so I'm going to cut that one back and we're actually working with somebody on seeing if we can get some cuttings to take of my remaining one. So hopefully then I'll replace the one I lost and maybe add another, a new one and he will have some as well. Alright, so let's continue through the weeds here. This is pomegranate. So this is sold to me as Russian Hardy by Baker Creek or Rare Seeds and it died to the ground this last winter but it's coming back nicely so we will see what happens with this guy there are some people in the area who've had luck with um, pomegranates so I'll keep hoping that's going to be the case uh, over here we have some quince. So this is Aromatania, I think. That's how you say it. It's supposed to be good to eat fresh. 
Also good for preserves and things like that. You can see some of the fruit growing. They get pretty large, you know, like a large apple or bigger. And uh, I haven't actually gotten any fruit from this one before. So I'm looking forward to that. I have gotten fruit from this one, which is a pineapple. And it is really struggling this spring with iron deficiency, which I'm trying to remedy. So we'll see what some of the new growth looks like when it starts putting out new leaves. But I think that caused it to kind of abandon all its fruit. So I don't think I'm gonna get any from this one this year. Um, and here we have another raspberry. So this actually gets shade in the afternoon, or sun in the afternoon and evening. And you can see here it's producing quite a few raspberries. So I only planted it last year. So it's really just kind of getting established. So it only put up one new cane last year and that's what it's bearing fruit on right now. But each plant has put up two new canes this year. So I'm looking forward to that. These are kind of a a unique raspberry in that they're not supposed to spread aggressively like most raspberries. And of course the fruit's purple, which is kind of cool too. Uh, speaking of purple fruit, <laughs> here we have some service berries. So these are Regent. They've been fruiting for uh, a couple weeks at least now. And they're just kind of finishing up here. Or we need it this week. So they've been Doing well. I just planted four of these this year. I have two small ones that I planted previously. And so I'm looking forward to them growing and kind of producing more in the coming years. So I do have some more strawberries over here. This is actually a different variety than my main patch. And that I think that they fruit a little bit later, which will be nice to kind of extend that strawberry season. So my main patch produced really well for like a week and a half. And then it kind of cut off. I mean, it still produced a little bit after that, but not very much. So I'm hoping that by planting another variety, we'll get a little bit longer season. So back here we have a choke cherry, planted this last fall, or spring actually. It has one little choke cherry in it. I don't know, yeah. Right there. <laughs> so it's growing, we'll see. These are my elderberries. So this one here is York. You can see some fruit on it. So this will be the first year I get fruit from them. And then next to it is um, Nova. So again, kind of a little bit of struggle with the iron, but it's doing okay. And we've got a little root sucker back there, which is fine. I don't mind it spreading a little bit. We have some medlar. So this is a new one. So it's blooming kind of out of season, but this is what medlar flowers look like. They're quite pretty. And it has fruit on this branch. So this one is marron or marin. I don't know. And then this one over here that's really struggling is bred a giant. So I'm not, there's gotta be something kind of weird about my patch of soil here. Cause I have a friend who doesn't live that far away who has the same variety and it's huge and green and beautiful. So I'm working on kind of fixing the soil in this area and hopefully that'll help it out. I planted a bunch more raspberry shortcake raspberries this spring. So all through here. And this tree here, this is a sweet treat pluary. So this will be the first year I get any fruit from it. I need to prune it this next fall, or winter, spring, whatever. But it does have a couple little fruits on it. They're just hard to find. Oh, there's one. So it's Still probably a month away from ripening. And then this next one here is Flavor King Pluot. Again, first year I'll be getting fruit from it. 
you can see it's a little easier to find the fruit on this guy. That's quite a few for its size. Then I have some blackberries here. This is Triple Crown. This is one of the varieties that typically does quite well here. I uh, planted it last fall. It is producing some little berries, which is more than I expected. Still flowering too. And then I also have some kind of primo cane. I'm not sure which variety of primo cane raspberry or blackberry this is. I have three of them. It wasn't really labeled very well at the nursery. And then I have all these little, like three of these little ones, and these are Apache, which is supposed to do well here as well. Uh, in addition to that, I have some Creeping Oregon Grape that I've planted. Most of these are here this year. So they'll kind of fill in this area and produce berries that you can make into jam and things like that. And then chocolate mint. So this is going to be my only chocolate mint. I'm going to tear out the stuff that's planted in the ground and just have this bunch in the barrel. So I just transplanted some of it uh, like a month ago and it's doing well. So I'm getting ready to tear out that other patch. Here's my vegetable garden. There's some tomatoes, peppers. I've actually harvested a couple peppers already. So I don't remember the varieties, but I basically went on to a, a seed website and figured out what were the earliest bearing peppers, and that's what I planted. Yeah, this is my Eastern Prince Shisandra vine, and it is doing okay. Um, yeah, not great, but it's surviving. Uh, these are Maypop, which I didn't think survived the winter, but they overnight just grew like a foot. And so they keep going. We'll see. I really doubt I'm going to get any fruit from them. I don't think our season is long enough. Uh, but they do flower, and that's nice too. And then kind of my last bits are these two peach trees over here. So they get, probably get too much shade. Um, so I, I'm thinking about transplanting them once I get the yard a little farther along. This is Red Haven. That one over there is Lemon Alberta and they've been planted for about four years and haven't really grown. Um, yeah, I did get a couple peaches from the Red Haven last year. They were really good. And then this is my backyard. So this is a project right now. I'm trying to clear it out, get it ready to plant next year. So I have quite a bit of room. You can see a big pile of bark there. So I actually took out a big elm tree this spring. Um, and I'm looking at replacing that with about 20 productive trees. So I'm gonna get some walnuts, probably a couple more almonds, a bunch of different fruit trees, a uh, bunch of hazelnuts, and a bunch, of, bunch more perennials. So this whole area is going to turn into a food forest, slowly over the next couple of years. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a fence along the property line, probably this fall and then sprinklers in either in the fall or early next spring. And then I'll be planting hopefully at least the larger trees next spring. So I'm really looking forward to, uh, in that back corner, I'm gonna plant a heart nut and a heart nut butternut cross, hopefully. So those are kind of some walnut, almond, well, walnut varieties. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to this part of the project, but it's a, it's a big project and I haven't had nearly as much time as I would like uh, just because of work 
All right, so that's my yard for now. Bye.